Some people know me from a TV show I did for many years called Dinner in a Movie, where I hosted the movies on TBS and we cooked themed dinners. Still don't know how to cook. And um, for many years now, I've inflicted my horrible nasal wine on NPR listeners. And now I write books. This is my third book, um, I See You Made an Effort. Um, this book is uh, a collection of essays about hitting middle age and realizing why it's called hitting middle age, not sauntering, gliding, sliding into middle age. It's a reason why they just call it hitting, for sure. I bought this this like anti-aging cream the other day that said the main ingredient is amber. That's like what they preserve fossils in. Um, the first chapter is about uh, a sex fantasy uh, that I have with my apple genius named Autumn, spelled A-U-D-U-M. Um, and okay, I wouldn't say something weirds me out about the generation. It's just that every interaction is a is a, a noticeable generational difference. And I'm really writing about that in the book because that I'm really writing about invisibility and the growing sense of invisibility that you get when you hit a certain age. And it surprised me. I just didn't, you know, didn't think that would happen for some reason because I was completely in denial. And the crazy thing is, is it really had happened years before and I hadn't realized it. I was just so in denial, I didn't notice that. One of the things about noticing a sense of invisibility, it's both, can be both horrible and fantastic, freeing and also, um, uh, you know, shocking when that happens, and I do write about that in the book. I write that um, if my person would ever be violated, no one would suggest it was because I'd worn something provocative. It would be considered a hate crime against women. I'm dealing with this in, in a comedic sense, but there is, while it's kind of fantastically freeing, there's some, there's a, there's a loss, and. Um, that's where, that's why I write comedy. I mean, that's what interests me in a comedic sense is that line between, you know, the comedic and the tragic. You can't believe that you're finding that funny, that it's so terrible, but it's also great and terrible. And I, that's what, you know, and, and that's, um, that's what I'm hoping to capture. And that's, I think, why I like, um, my, why I like Russian writers and why I like people like, um, I aspire to, you know, uh, Gary Steingart, and I love um, Shalom Auschlander. When Auschlander discovers that Anne Frank is living in his attic and she's trying to outdo herself because her diaries were so popular and now she's got to try it. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable, uh, but it's so funny to, and it's so, I, I love that. I love that, like, oh, that's just wrong. That's not, I, if I can be provocative in any way, like, like you know, in, that, in that realm, that's, that really interests me. So I started um, as an actress, and so, uh, and, and then I started doing, you know, commentary in NPR and performing my own work. And I used to write with, uh, I used to write performing my own work before it was on the page. I would. I would speak it first and perform it first, and now I do the opposite. Now I'm writing to be read, which is just really different. And so when um, I'm adapting this book right now as a play, um, which plays in Los Angeles and hopefully will take it elsewhere, like my last book, You Say Tomato, I Say Shut Up. And what I've really found to be a challenge this time is that this book, um, even more so than what I've been writing in the past, it's a book about you know ideas, and there's a certain amount of um, you know like a polemic nature to it. I'm I'm arguing certain points, and that just doesn't really fit in a play. It fits in a lecture or a TED talk, or you know that kind of a format. And so I go to this uh, punk rock concert, hoping that punk rock will revive me and punk rock will be like the anti-50 because it's about 
turning 50 in the play. And uh, I go to this concert and uh, I'm, you know, poking fun at this band singing political material. And so like, there's a line in the book, which is in the play, which is I say that uh, they're singing about war experiences they learned about firsthand by viewing YouTube videos posted by musicians singing about the war experiences they read about on blogs written by poets in Red Hook. Okay, you try saying that in a situation and it doesn't exactly, you know, I, I think it's a better sentence to read than to say out loud. So I've really had to work on adapting the language, some of it that I got kind of attached to in the writing of the book. But I do have, I still have aspirations as an actress. I do hope that um, Game of Thrones will be on just a little bit longer because uh, I have arthritis in my hands, which is very sexy. And I'm hoping to play a toothless crone begging for coin of the realm in Game of Thrones because my hands are just gonna, in, in like a year or two, I figure they're really gonna be gnarly. And I'm old enough now to play, I'm actually older than the oldest person I think ever seen on Game of Thrones because people didn't live though. I don't know, is it in the past or in the future? Or is it in both the past? I don't understand it, but I think I'd be perfect for that. So I'm, that's my, Hope is an actress.